Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. In today's journey, we are still in the parish of Trelawney. We are heading towards the parish of St. James. Continue to sit back, continue to relax, and continue to enjoy this journey with me. Now, <laughs> in yesterday's video, you would have noticed that where the photos were supposed to be in the video, you would have seen deleted. I was the one who put deleted there because I uploaded the video three different times to youtube and they were apparently having issues with the photos that's why the video came out so late last night but let me tell you something let me tell you something you see some of you know you know you know fiesty you know after i pinned my comment and i tried to explain what happened some persons they were still commenting and Quarreling about the fact that deleted was there instead of the photos. One guy, yeah man, you, you, you same one. You went as far as to tell me or to ask me if it's a blind man editing my videos. <laughs> Boy, may I tell you, you know. Now, let me ask you something. What if I was to answer you accordingly? Don't you have X? You say the sixth sense there, name common sense. It no common at all. Remember me tell you. Anyway, any news today? This one took place yesterday morning. Tuesday, December 12th, about 7.30. It took place along the Lilliput Main Road in the parish of St. James. Our information is that that man on your screen, his name is Omart Romeo Brissett. Omart was born on August 3. 1989, 34 years old, and he lived in Montego Bay. We are told that Omar, he was driving a purple Toyota Voxy with three passengers aboard. They included 32-year-old Portia Anglin, a personal care assistant of a Minnesota in the United States address. Also in the vehicle was a 72-year-old pensioner who he is the owner of the Voxy and a 28-year-old photographer of a Negril address. They were traveling along the Lilliput Main Road and they were heading towards Falmouth direction in a line of traffic. But Omar, for some reason, he could not wait. He decided to chop the line. He pulled out from the line of traffic into the right lane and he attempted to overtake the vehicle that was in front of him, but a tractor trailer laden with cement was coming in the opposite direction. The driver for the trailer, he saw what was about to happen and he swerved to his left, trying to avoid the collision, but it was too late. The Toyota Voxy that Omar was driving, it was traveling too fast. As a result, the right front section collided into the tractor trailer as a result of this collision the toyota voxy it was pushed backwards across the roadway onto the right embankment where it came to a stop the tractor trailer it veered left of the roadway onto the left embankment where it hit down a signpost it then collided into a concrete building now that building it housed a cook shop and an auto parts store and it came to a stop at that building luckily no one was inside the shops both omar and the female they were trapped in the voxy and they had to be cut out by firefighters they ended up dying on the spot the other passengers and the driver for the truck they were also injured they were taken to hospital sad indeed now this next incident it took place yesterday morning, Tuesday, December 12th, about 7.30. It 
It took place at Good Hope District in the Negril Police area in the parish of Westmoreland. We are learning that a guy, he's popularly known as Bigger and Bigger, he's said to be in his early 40s. We are told that Bigger, he's a bike taxi operator and he's living in the same Good Hope area. We are told that Bigger, he was in the community when a motor car drove up and stopped at his feet. A guy who is popularly known as Mad Move jumped out of the car and stepped up to Bigger. It is said that Mad Move, he accused Bigger of slandering his name. It is alleged that Mad Move, he pulled a gun and opened gunfire at Bigger. Bigger, he managed to run off and Mad Move chased him, still firing shots at him. Mad move, he then jumped back into the car and made good his escape. It was then realized that Bigger, he was shot. He received gunshot wounds to the right side of his chest and the left side of his abdomen. Bigger, he was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, four 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So... Jason Clark, also known as Mad Move. You are now wanted by the police. In this next story, we are learning that yesterday morning, Tuesday, December 12, about some minutes to 11 o'clock, residents of the Mountain View area of Barretal in the parish of St. James, they stumbled upon the leg of a human being along a mile road in the area. When the residents made further checks, they saw the body of a human being with a leg missing. Now, that body was in some bushes and about 8 feet from where the leg was found. The body was in an advanced state of decomposition and was dressed in a dark colored shirt and a green t-shirt. We are also told that a foot of black slipper with red stripes on the top was found closely to the body. The police, they were called in and they commenced investigations. We are told that due to the state of decomposition, it's not known if the body is a male or a female. A postmortem will be done to ascertain the cause of death. Now, if we get any other information, we will certainly be updating this story. This next one, it took place Monday afternoon, December 11, about 5.30. Our information is that a team of police officers, they were on an operation on the Old Elshire Beach Road in Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine when they stumbled upon the lifeless body of a man. This man is said to be about in his early 50s, of a dark complexion and stout built. He's about 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs about 240 pounds. He was dressed in a brown gap shirt, a grey underpants and a black jeans pants. He had a low cut hairstyle and he was clean shaved. He was also barefooted. We are told that the body was seen lying on its right side with the hands bound behind him with an orange electrical extension card. His feet were bound with a black shirt, a piece of cloth was tied around his neck. He appeared to have been killed about a few hours before he was found by the police. Up to the time of recording this video, that man, he has not yet been identified. Now, as soon as we find out who he is, we are certainly going to be updating this story. The mayhem. And still in Portmore, this one took place last night. Tuesday, December 12, about 8 o'clock. It took place along the roadway on Hibiscus Drive in the Hamilton Gardens area of Gregory Park in Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine. We are learning that residents of the area, they heard gunshots being fired. When the shooting subsided, they went and made checks. We are told that the residents, they saw a man popularly known as Randy. Randy is said to be in his early 50s. The lifeless body of Randy was seen lying along the roadway in a 
pool of blood. The police, they were called and when they inspected Randy, he had gunshot wounds to his upper body. He appeared to have died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, two 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, in this next story, on Sunday, I carried a story. It was about an incident that took place at the 24 Sevens Bar on Jimmy Cliff Boulevard in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. I told you that that guy on your screen, his name is Roger Holt. He was born on April 9, 2003, only 20 years old. Roger, he lived in the Narwood area of St. James. I told you that early Sunday morning, Roger, he was at the club when he and a young lady got into a fight. They were parted by an off-duty policeman. And if you notice, I am no longer going to be using the words alleged or allegations because all of what I'm telling you was captured on CCTV. So the off-duty policeman, he introduced himself to Roger and the female as a police officer and he parted them. Moments later, the female, she reported to the off-duty policeman that Roger was still harassing her. The policeman, he went and spoke to Roger about his behavior. Roger pulled a knife and attacked the policeman. As a result, he was shot and seriously wounded. Roger, he was rushed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was admitted in a serious condition but on monday roger he succumbed to his injuries i can tell you this from now based on what is captured on video that of duty policeman he had no other choice but to defend himself and indicom will have no problem ruling that the policeman's action was justified Ah oh boy. Now, this next incident, it took place yesterday morning, Tuesday, December 12th, about a few minutes after 9 o'clock. We are learning that residents of the Green Pond area of St. James, they heard gunshots being fired in the area. When the shooting subsided, they went and made checks. A man, his name is Edward Wilberforce Bryan. He was born on June 6th. 1966, 57 years old, and he was said to be an electrician living in the Farmview area of Farm Heights in the parish of St. James. He was found lying face down in a pool of blood on the piazza of a spring water store located along the Green Pond Main Road. The police, they were called, and when they inspected Edward Bryan, he had received gunshot wounds to his head and his upper body. He appeared to have died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, a total of eight 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. And we are also learning that in recent times, close relatives of Edward Bryan, they were also shot and killed by hoodlums. So the question is, what could have caused all of this? We are digging. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, now, for a while, there has been a lot of mayhem in the Green Island Police area. These areas include Caldwell, Pell River, Friendship, Spring Mount and surrounding areas. Like I told you before, all of these guys who are involved in the mayhem, they were good friends. Some of them went to school together. They were friends until them start chop the line and start make money. 
Mantif, Man Client, and Man Bingo, and No Sheer the Money, right? So, Bad Mind and Jealousy, take over. That guy on your screen, his name is Gleshian Miller, but he was popularly known as Ryan R. Babel. He was 28 years old at the time, and he lived at Pell River in the parish of Hanover. He was shot and killed on the night of Tuesday, March 21, about 8.30. He was shot and killed in his Toyota Axia motor car in the Friendship area of Hanover. Immediately after Babel was killed, there was word on the street as to who might have killed him and why. So, hoodlums, they decided to take revenge. Exactly one week after Babel was killed, on the night of Tuesday, March 28, about 9 o'clock, a 26-year-old man named O'Shean Williams, popularly known as Clutch, he was shot and killed in the Lawless Lane area of Caldwell in the parish of Hanover. He was killed the night, but it wasn't until in the morning that residents found him on the veranda where he was killed. Clutch killing was seen as a reprisal for the killing of Babel. But guess what? Clutch killing was a case of mistaken identity. We are told that Clutch, he had locks here and the person who the hoodlum wanted also had locks here are you following me now clutch he lived in the good hope area of westmoreland and he had gone to the area to look for a female what we are learning is that the person who the hoodlums wanted he lived next door to where clutch was killed and that person also had locks here. You're still following me? No, that person is that guy on your screen. He was the person who the hoodlums wanted. His name is Nicky Ennis, but he was popularly known as Big Star. Big Star was born on October 5, 1987, 36 years old. Now, after Clutch was killed, Big Star, him take away himself and him left the area. Our information is that today is Big Star father's birthday. Well, if it's not today, it's yesterday or tomorrow. Follow me. It is also Big Star parents' wedding anniversary. So, Big Star, he returned to his parents' home to celebrate with them. Big Star, he had even cut his locks. But hoodlums... They got information that Big Star was around. About 11 o'clock last night, Tuesday, December 12, Big Star, he was at home at Lawless Lane in the Caldwell area. He was there with other family members to include his mother, his father and his 13-year-old son. Our information is that they were awoken by loud banging on the front door and Persons on the outside were shouting, Police, open the door. The hoodlums, they forcefully entered the house and on seeing Big Star, they opened gunfire at him. Big Star, he managed to run from the living room and he jumped through a window in the back bedroom occupied by his 13-year-old son, MJ. Both other hoodlums were outside and they opened gunfire at Big Star, hitting him to his upper body. Big Star's 13-year-old son, he was also shot. He received gunshot wounds to his left arm and his right leg. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape. A search of the area was done and Big Star, he was found lying on his right side in a dirt truck at the back of his house. Big Star appeared to have died on the spot. His son, MJ, he was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, six 9mm and eight M16 spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend.
about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin. Criminals 